everyone my name is precious peculiar i'm an author i'm a blogger i'm a coach and i'm also a medical student i'm here to help you overcome fear anxiety and lack of self-confidence so that you can step into your purpose today okay so the topic we have before us today is do what god says do what god says okay some people are waiting for for should I say a big instruction, like a big calling, like a big assignment from God before they move. They are waiting for something big. They feel that if it's not big, it can't be from God. God is big, 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 lad, lad, lad. That he can't give small instructions now. He can't give small instructions. But they don't know that the big things, the foundation of those big things starts from those small things. If you don't start small, you will not grow big. All the things you want are in those tiny, tiny instructions. They are in those small, small things. They are in those tiny, tiny things that you are taking for granted. Those small, small things that you don't want to do is because they are seemingly small. You think they are not so important. But all those big things, every big thing or every big person started small. Every big thing has its roots from a small thing. The same way, every I'm talking about chemistry now. Every compound, every what's that thing? Polymer. It came from a small something, a small molecule. So everything that is small, atom. Everything that is small. So God will not give you that big instruction until you have started the small one. Even in my life, all the small, small things I've been that God has been asking me to do, they are what has led, they are what they are, they are, they are, as they are building up and as I'm moving forward, I'm just seeing that ah. So if I do not do that thing that day, I won't I won't have gotten this instruction. There was something that God asked me to do. Okay, the date was actually December twenty eighth. December 28, 2020, God asked me to do something then. And like in January something, January 10th or so, God told me that if I did not do that thing that day, I wouldn't have gotten the next instruction. Like life story, I'm not, I'm not lying, I'm not joking, God is my witness, he's here with us today. Until you do those small things, you won't get the big instruction. Most of you are waiting for something big like God said, God told me to go and plant a church. But God has told you something like, go and join that fellowship. Go and start a WhatsApp group about prayer. Go and do something. Just small, small things. Seemingly easy things. And you're just throwing them away. Throwing the instructions away. Throwing the ideas away. Putting it inside one corner and putting it and sleeping on it. If you don't start small, you won't grow big. The big instructions are hidden in the tiny instructions. The big instructions are hidden in the tiny instructions. I posted on my Twitter recently. I think I even pinned it. It's pinned. Yeah, it's pinned on the wall. So what I said was that, what has God asked you to do? Have you done it? Are you doing it? You had better do what God has asked you to do while there is yet time. He gets why. Pinned like that. Oh. <laughs> you had better do what God has asked you to do while there is yet time. He gets why. Okay, I'm here today to explain that he gets why. What is the why? Why should you do what God has asked you to do now? Okay, I have scriptural references to back up my point. I'm in my Bible today and it's open. My hand is inside. Okay. So, okay. So, point number one. Why you must do what God has asked you to do. Or, or what will happen if you don't do what God has asked you to do. Or what, how you are showing yourself. How God will start looking at you if you don't do what he has asked you to do. Okay, number one. When you don't do what God has asked you to do. You are indirectly saying that you don't know God. When you don't do what God has asked you to do, you are indirectly saying that you don't know God. The word of God in First John chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. I'm reading that from my Bible. Okay, Jesus. First John chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. And hereby do we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Here, here, hereby do we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. So if you are not doing what God has asked you to do. You are saying that you don't know God. If you are not doing what God has asked you to do. You are saying that you don't know God. Verse 4. He that saith I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. 
is a liar and the truth is not in him. You cannot say you know God and you're not doing what he has asked you to do. Let's first start from this from the small ten commandments. The commandments of God are not grievous. The commandments of God are not grievous. The word of God in Matthew chapter eleven verse twenty eight to thirty talks about come to me, come to me if you are if you are weary and heavy and I'll give you rest. But you have to take my yoke, and my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What God will ask you to do is actually not hard. If you start, you will see that it is not hard. When God to, when God told me to start this live now. Like, I was like, God, what is this? Like, this is so big. It's bigger than me. I can't do this. I'm in school. I'm a study medical student. I can't do this. But until I started, did I see that, guys, it's not, it's not actually hard. If you're working with the Holy Spirit, you're working with God, and you're doing it with Him, it's, it's not, it is not difficult. The commandments of God are not difficult. But you've not started first. You know when, the, you know, you know those in the, in the, in a scenario when, Maybe your parents, your mom tells your mom tells you to go and look for something, but you don't just want to look for. You don't want distress. You just I can't find it. I can't find it. Then she'll not tell you that I know you have not searched. And I, you look at her like, okay, I know she she's, she's actually not lying. I've actually not checked. You have not started first, and you're just there complaining that I can't do it. Have you taken the first step? Have you taken the first step? Have you made an effort? Have you moved your feet? Have you moved? No. You have not tried. They are there complaining that I can't do this. It's too hard. You need to start first. Every step taken in faith moves you forward in the plan and purpose of God for your life. If you're not taking steps, you are stagnating your life and the lives of others. If you're not taking steps and moving forward, you are stagnating the life and life of others. Okay, so back to the scripture. If you, you can't say you know him and you are not doing what he has asked you to do. You can't say you know him and you're not doing what he has asked you to do. Then the truth is not in you. The truth is not in you. Okay, that's point number one. It means you don't know God. If you don't do it, if you don't do what he has asked you to do, it means you don't know God. That's point number one. Okay, so now point number two. Let's open our Bible to John chapter 14. Okay. John chapter 14 verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Simple simple and short if you love me keep my commandments so when you don't do what god has asked you to do when you are not obeying his commandments it means that you don't love him it means that you don't love him simple it means that you don't love him harsh i'm reading it from the bible it's not me when you don't do what he has asked you to do it means that you don't love him Point number three. That one is that one is so straightforward. Simple. You don't love him. And if you now see, say that you love him, according to John first John chapter two verse four, and you're not doing it what you're asked to do, the truth is not in you. So okay, number three now. John chapter John chapter fifteen verse fourteen. Now first one fourteen, fifteen, fifteen, fourteen. God is good. So John fifteen verse fourteen. And it says, You are my friends if you do what I command. So if you are not obeying God and do what he has asked you to do, you are not his friend. You are not his friend. That's why some people will be complaining that God is not speaking to me. I think I've already made a video about that. Why you think God is not speaking to you? In other words, why? what, what actually means that? Why you? You are not hearing. Because God is always speaking. The Holy Spirit is always moving. Miracles are always happening. You just need eyes to see, hands to seize, and feet to step into it. I said that before. So first John, sorry, John fifteen verse fourteen. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. A friend will only tell secrets to another friend. You will not go and divulge your whole life to someone that you don't know, would you? No. So you first of all, you don't know God because you're not doing what He has asked you to do. Then you don't love Him and you want Him to be telling you things. You want Him to be telling Him telling you things. Not just about him. Not just about him. God, God, God. You, do, you want God to be telling you things. Not just about him. Not like not just about God. He wants you to tell tell you things about you about your future when you don't know him. According to First John two verse four, when you don't love him. According to John fifteen, John fourteen fifteen, and when you're not his, when he's not your friend, when you're not his friend, I want him to speak to you. Will you just okay if you see a stranger on the road and maybe like if their zip is not properly done. Sometimes you might tell them that, ah, brother, sister, you're distant. Is it every time? 
No, sometimes you just move past. So God just be seen as you are just there hitting walls and your life is just somehow. Don't be looking at you. You're not his friend now. You're not you don't love him, you're not his friend and you, you don't know him. So why should he help you? Help your mother. Harsh. <laughs> you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. I was reading a you version devotional and I was talking about intimacy with God. And it was like your intimacy with God increases when you do what He says. His obedience is how you respond to the things He says to you, how you respond to the things He gives to you. So there are some friends you like just things with, and when they come, they're just how it is. There's other people, they'll just be dulling your moments. <laughs> That's how it is. How you respond when God is speaking to you, how are you responding? Are you taking it with so much joy? Or you're saying, eh, Yeah, I knew that before. Tell me what I don't know. <laughs> is that how you treat what God tells you? Ask yourself that. Is that how you treat what God tells you? You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. So God only reveals himself to the people that are his friends. He only tells the people that are his friends secrets. Let's go to verse 15. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servants not knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all the things I have heard, of my, heard from my father I have made known unto you. You can only get to this level when you are a friend of God. And what do friends do? Friends keep in touch. Friends keep in touch. Friends tell each other things. Friends keep in touch. Friends tell each other things. Friends know each other. Friends love each other. You have to become a friend. How do you become a friend? By growing in your intimacy. How do you grow in your intimacy? How do you respond? To God, how are you responding to what God has been telling you? To what to the instructions He has been giving you, even if it's not an instruction to the things He has been telling you normally. How are you responding? Are you thinking it's yourself? Are you saying, "Oh, I knew that before"? Tell me something I don't know. Are you saying, "Eh, ah, but someone is already doing it"? Are you saying, how, "What are you saying?" How is your intimacy level? Are you really God's friend? The word of God in James chapter four verse it says, "Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you." God is the Musa; He's on His throne. You you can you cannot be expecting Him to come. You're not ready. Then you're not ready. You're not ready for you're not ready for foolish. You're not ready for anything. You go to him. You are the one that needs help. God does not need you for anything. He does not need your help. He does not need you. That vision that he has given you, you are holding it there, keeping it inside your chest. As if you are thinking you are the only person in the world. How many other billions, billion people could he have given that thing to? You're not the only one. I just need to drop that ego. You're not the only one. He can give it to another person. I'm not the only one. Build your intimacy with him. Build your intimacy with him. Then you will have no problem hearing. Even sometimes your friend can even come and drag you. Even when it's not your business. Some things don't concern you. And God will tell you something about another person. It's not that like he's gossiping or anything. That, that's the level of intimacy you should, you should aspire to get to. God will tell you things. Even things you don't even ask him. God can just tell you something about your future that, wow, I do, I've, I've never even prayed for that. Thank you, Father. For telling me that that's so good to know thank you don't you want that don't you want that so build your intimacy with god james chapter 4 verse 8 draw near to me and i'll draw near to you the condition is on you the condition is on you you are the one that has to draw near god will not come down and draw near you're not ready be like be staying there be waiting for him mm -mm. you are the one that has to go you're the one that needs help god doesn't need your help you are the one that needs to share, the one that carry yourself and go to God. Go to Him. Go to Him. You are the one that needs Him. He doesn't need you for anything. If He was hungry, He would not tell you. The cattle on a thousand, He will belong to Him. Gold and silver is His. He doesn't need you for anything. I saw one scripture in Second Chronicles 15, verse 2. I think Amplified Version. It says, Chronicles 15 verse 2. If you seek me as your soul's first necessity, I will let you find me. But if you draw away from me, I will draw away from you. If you abandon me, I will abandon you. The condition is on you. The condition is on you. Some people are blaming God up and down. You are wasting your own time. The condition is on you. 
Draw near to me now, draw near to you. If you seek me as your soul's first necessity, do you know what that means? If you seek me as your soul's first necessity, I will let you find me. If you abandon me, I will abandon you. The condition is on you. Praise God. So these are just a few things. Why you must these are just a few reasons reasons why you must do what God has asked you to do. To show that you love him. Love is not in words, it's in actions. Love is a verb, is a is a doing word. To show that you love him, to show that you know him, to show that you are his friend. Friends only share secrets with friends. So you stop complaining that God is not speaking to me. I'm not hearing from God. God is not I'm not hearing from God. So you stop complaining that when you become a friend. Friends don't beg each other to tell them things. Don't beg, they don't beg each other to greet each other in the morning. Even things that you don't want to hear, your friend will tell you by force. They'll tap you must hear, hear by force. So when 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 you when you get to that level, you stop bothering, you stop. Become a friend, become a lover, become a doer, become a knower. No, that you know God, know God. Praise God. So that's my word for you today. That's my word for you today. Let me read that tweet again. What has God asked you to do? Are you doing it? Did you, sorry, did you do it? Are you doing it? Do that which God has asked you to do while there is yet time. Gets why. Praise God.